Back on morning, and thanks for joining us. It's our final segment this morning as we're talking uh, with uh, Representative uh, London Lamar out of Memphis um, about the human trafficking issue. Stick around, too, by the way. Um, after we conclude this, we're going to have a longer session at the end of the show. Leland will be joining us, and we're going to update you on the very latest on what is uh, shaping up to be a pretty severe weather day. But, Representative, thank you again for joining us this morning. And uh, so where do we go from here? I mean, it, it, are you satisfied with uh, these two pieces of legislation? I know there's some others that are addressing issues as well on this and it seems to some degree and sadly Tennessee so often with regard to children's issues sometimes lags behind nationally but when it comes to the human trafficking issue from the TBI to lawmakers it seems like we're kind of one of the leaders in the country on this type of stuff where do we go from here well, this is just a start, my two pieces of legislation. This is not an end all be all. This is not a complete solution to the um to the human trafficking. It's just a start. And it's I feel like human trafficking is an issue we all have to be engaged in, just like voting. We all have to take part in educating each other and being aware of the signs of human trafficking in order to curb this particular crime. No one should have to feel coerced or uh, held against their will um, for the financial benefit of someone else. Um, so what we need to do is continue to have conversations. I want to continue to work with the human trafficking organizations I want to continue to work with victims. I want to continue to work with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to figure out how we can further mitigate this problem. And I want to continue to work with law enforcement to figure out what can we do to further support them to um, make sure they're catching these perpetrators who are um, taking advantage of young girls, who are taking advantage of children, who are taking advantage of adults as well, who be, may be falling on hard times or they may be doing something to hold them against their will. So. It is important that we show compassion for people and that you have individuals on both sides of the aisle, such as myself, being able to speak up for victims and support you and continue to mitigate this crime through policy change and legislation. And again, I think the focus that you're on, and I think it's the important one to place to start, is on the victims. It's on the victims, is it not? And um, we've heard on time again, in far as the, uh, the perpetrators in this case, oftentimes if they're that way, you've heard one time and again this kind of child molesting and the like it's not something that can be cured you know it's the way it is they have to deal with it I don't know if if you feel there need to be tougher laws or are they pretty strict on the books I know we have the sex offender registry um, you know if you're um, convicted of aggravated child abuse or sexual abuse you go away for quite some time and it's not a pleasant time for you behind bars I'm just wondering what you think on that side of the coin I think that we've done a good job at putting things in place in order to hold them accountable. And when they are caught, they are going to be dealt with seriously. You know, even if we put the most, the best laws in place or the, have the most strict laws or they have to serve like, they're gonna, like we said earlier, are gonna still be individuals who violate the law and participate this in this act, unfortunately. But what we can do is be confident that if they decide to do this despite all of the issues and the times and the penalties that will be put against you, you are going to be dealt with severely. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is to dissuade anyone who will consider mm -hmm. doing this. And if you want to decide to be on the sex offenders list for life, want to decide to put yourself at risk because you're causing harm, that victim is going to have a self-defense clause now in the courtroom. If you really want to put your life, your career, your family, your whole reputation on the line, go ahead and do it. But no, we're going to deal with you seriously. And I appreciate Tennessee sending the message out to all perpetrators of human trafficking, all those who are trafficking children and individuals who are um, have, may have a lack in resources. Just know that we're going to get you, we're going to deal with you, and then we're not going to tolerate that in our state. You know, um, again, we know that one of your inspirations for one of the bills was Santoya Brown. She was 16 at the time this happened. And I guess in your research, too, you're aware of the fact that, I mean, some of this, as hard as it is to believe, this human trafficking deals with children far younger even than that, correct? Sadly, yes. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, again, it goes back to, you know, most, 40%, uh, a strong 40% of human trafficking victims are um, introduced to that life by their family. Wow. And so times you have children at a very young age who are being manipulated by individuals in their family very young. Um, 
and it, and it's just sad to think about it and it's sickening to think about that but it does happen um but what we do know is we are hiding the crimes on sexual abuse for on children so if family or stranger if you mess with a child you're going to be dealt with seriously and it may goes up across the board for all children. You know, whatever their identity is, whatever um, their socioeconomic situation is, whatever their race is, we're going to protect all our children because I'm a legislator that fights for all Tennesseans and want all our children to be able to um, be protected in this state. And that is what it's about. And we're going to continue to send that message out to the public that we do not play that when it comes to our babies. Yeah, you just can't at this time, you know. I mean, uh, taking it very seriously. And it's interesting that 40% starts with family. And I, I guess we need to remind folks, too, the human trafficking and the victims and those involved, it crosses over all races, okay? It, it crosses over. There's, there's no um, template for it where you would say it's just uh, this specific segment of the population, though I think there may be a socioeconomic reason in some instances, perhaps. But is that the way you, you view it, that... It, it certainly crosses across all different cultural divides, but maybe there, and, and it could also obviously happen in more wealthy homes for sure, but that there may be a social um, uh, or rather socioeconomic if it's something where they're thinking of, you know, making money by trafficking in a child. Absolutely. Um Again, you know, it's not, people think of human trafficking like if it's a movie taken, like, you know, you're kidnapped, you're right. taken to this warehouse or something like that. No, it's so in your face, mm -hmm. you know, I, and it, uh, when you're poor or more poor, you are more likely to be um, a traffic than someone who does come yeah. from a more wealthy or established household. And again, it goes back to a trafficker is someone who sees a poor young girl at the corner store who can only afford a bag of Cheetos sure. for dinner. The next thing he's saying, I'm going to make sure I clothe you and feed you. I just need you to sleep with my friends or I need you to go sleep with A, B, C, D and E. That's trafficking. And that's taking advantage of someone who, you know, doesn't have the resources and you are dangling what food is considered something essential to live in their face in order for them to have to manipulate their bodies and sell themselves. That is what I'm talking about when we need folks on the ground to be educated and aware of those type of signs because it's that in your face of you passing the hungry young girl walking into the store and a trafficker seeing her as an opportunity to make him uh, make her his next victim. Absolutely. Just uh, curious, when you pass uh, legislation like this, uh, and obviously the governor is going to sign both of these uh, bills, uh, you always look at the price tag involved with it, even though I think any kind of price to prevent this is worth it. But there, there isn't as much. I mean, it's just strengthening some of the, uh, the laws and changing it. Is there much of a price tag attached to this type of thing? Or does it provide for more resources to fight this in the laws? My particular bill is not a fiscal bill yeah. because we have what we want to do is give more autonomy to um, those who are already deemed the experts and the leaders on fighting this particular issue. So that means advocating for more money for the Tennessee Bureau of uh, Investigation to have more money to fight human trafficking because they lead you know, much of that investigation in the state is advocating for more funding for our human trafficking organizations on the ground who do victim services, is advocating for more money for attorneys and law enforcement and police officers to be on the ground, to be able to do these thing operations, to, to, to be able to create a larger and more effective apparatus at, you know, solving this issue. So there are, you know, my particular uh, build with the self-defense clause that doesn't need a fiscal note because that's put a law in place that the judge and the jury gets to use in how they interact and, and charge people in the criminal justice system. This particular training, we have human trafficking organizations in the state who have the capacity to put these trainings together already. We just got to make sure that the teachers have to take it. And so I look for other ways as a member of the Finance Ways and Means Committee to support the organizations and the law enforcement agencies who are doing the work already and making sure we can allocate more resources for them. 
Awesome. Well, listen, I applaud your efforts and I applaud the fact that this is uh, bipartisan legislation, something that needs to be addressed and it's disgusting that it continues and it's not going to go away because we know the folks that perpetrate it are going to keep doing it. So that's why we need laws like this. Representative, thank you so much for joining us this morning. All right. I enjoyed you. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. And I hope the public continues to support our efforts to combat human trafficking in Tennessee. Absolutely. And we'll talk again, ma'am. Thank you again for joining us. And you, you be safe there. I think there's some severe weather in Memphis as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Again, that's Representative London Lamar. Appreciate her joining us this morning, talking about what I think are two very important pieces of legislation that the governor will now sign to try to fight human trafficking, which, uh, you know, we talk about it a lot. You just don't realize how prevalent it really is. It's all around us. And it breaks my heart. These poor kids caught up in a horrible situation. Look, we'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll be joined in a moment by the great Leland Statham. He and Nikki D have been uh, on alert all morning long, all right, uh, with this weather situation. In some ways, the the thing that caught my attention uh, before um, I came onto the show here, listening to Leland during one of his hits, you know Leland's been here now for more than 25 years, and he says there's a situation right now in some counties where it's a level five status as opposed to four, three, two, and one. And level five, he says he can only remember a very a handful of times since he's been here that a county has been notified of that with regard to potential for severe weather. That's pretty high. And for him to say that, we're dealing with some issues today. So uh, let's take a break. We'll be back and get into that with Leland. If you have a question or comment as well, you're welcome to join us. We'll be back right after this.